Mr. Mr. Brigante. It's the second time you turned me down for a drink, man. Well, you don't like my champagne? Hey, it could be. I don't know. Maybe it's a misfucking understanding here. I don't know, man. Maybe you don't remember me. My name is Benny. Maybe Benny I don't Bob. give a shit. Maybe I don't remember the last time I blew my nose either. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? I should remember you. Huh? What, you think you like me? You ain't like me, motherfucker. You a punk. I've been with made people. Connected people. Who you been with? Chain snatching, jive ass, modico motherfuckers. <laughs> Why don't you get lost? Go ahead, snatch your purse. Come on, take a fucking walk. I, I mean, it doesn't get better than Carlito's way ever. Almost everything in life can be referenced by that movie. And if you don't think so, um, I don't know what to tell you. How are you guys doing? This is episode, who the frick knows? Episode 58. 58. Make sure you guys can hear me. You can hear me. We're going to get going. We've got a lot to talk about. Shit, a lot, a lot happened in the last week or so. Um, unreal. Uh, about last weekend or so, about, eh, maybe last weekend or mid, mid, midweek, um, we ended up saying, we ended up seeing a video of a Mach E GT, a supposed Mach E GT doing all wheel drive burnouts. Everyone's like, no sound. You can hear it. You just got to turn up your Metro PCS phone piece of junk. So <laughs> we've detected copyright audio and video in your stream. Your stream may temporarily be blocked. So guys, they might block the stream if that thing, because every time I put a, a movie clip up, Every time I do anything like that, um, YouTube immediately gets rid of my shit. Like immediately gets rid of my shit. But hopefully, you guys can have it up, and I'm gonna I'm recording the whole time. So hopefully they don't take my shit down. But if they do, what the hell are you gonna do? But it's worth it sometimes. Sometimes it's worth it to get your point across. But let's talk about the Mach E GT. Mach E GT going out there and uh, doing all wheel drive burnouts. Did do you guys see the Mach E? A stripped down version with like stupid fans and really loud motors doing an insane amount of uh, donuts and just craziness. And it was really cool, like really cool to see. And that made me go, oh, that's awesome. Ford is, and you know, they said it's a spy shot and I think it's a Ford placed spy in the bushes. Hey, hey, Steve, why don't you go in the bushes and just kind of like, um, Make it look like it's a it's it's a, a spy video. They're just gonna let some guy just like jumped fences and, and walked miles and just happened to be at the right place, right time for all that shit to go down. So the Mach E GT was out there doing donuts and shit. I'm gonna try to find the video, but the Mach E um, GT stripped down version was out there doing like all wheel drive donuts and, and and a bunch of cool shit and it sounded sick. Like it sounded. Really cool. Hopefully, I can find it real quick before I get too off kilter. Uh, Mach E Donuts. So, Mustang Mach E Donuts. Hit enter. Come on, baby. I ain't got time to waste. You know what I am saying? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Here it is. The, the drift. The, the drift. And everyone's like, oh, I hope it's not a guy talking over it. I don't want to hear a guy talk over the shit i just want to like get to the nitty gritty let me see now the prob there's a couple of problems with the video right away um i said what's going on guys here we go this uh fuck i'm gonna just mute his shit um and basically unfortunately you know what you know what i'm not gonna even use his shit because then i'm sure he's gonna put some kind of oh use my video to make money fuck it so the Maki -E GT was out there, or, a, or a, some kind of uh, prototype was out there doing all-wheel drive donuts, and it sounded sick. It sounded like variable frequency drives, and we doing all-wheel drive donuts. But then I went, oh, no. Ken Block is probably going to drift this fucking thing somewhere. We're going to have to see a 55-year-old Ken Block come in like this. Hey, guys, what's going on? So Ford's making awesome vehicles now. <coughs> I can't even make the voice anymore. And uh, they have this badass drift machine. And I call it the, the I don't know. He's going to call it some stupid. The Huna fucker. Uh, the Huna corn. The Huna dick. The electric Huna dick and corn. And I'm going to go out there and drift it. With batteries. The motor in this thing is just batteries. 
lithium batteries. You know, it's just like, that's, I can foresee that coming. Like, here we fucking go again, Ford, rehashing the same old bullshit. So that's exciting. At least they're showing the power potential of the thing. But back on rehashing. The last two days have been full of Bronco shit, which was kind of nice because the COVID stuff is off of my page. The Jeffrey Epstein stuff, Epstein stuff, should not be forgotten, Tom Hanks and everyone, all of you guys that are on the plane, were on the plane, should not be forgotten. But it was nice just to get back to kind of normal. But the ball washing, ooh, the ball washing that was happening with everyone affiliated with Ford. It's almost like everyone is a fluffer for Ford. Oh, you're going to release something? Let me just... uh, They're just going to go out there and give just fluff Ford. Be like, oh, you're... Bronco? Yeah, it's badass. Yeah, let's get you ready. Yeah, come on, come on. Everyone's out there ball washing this thing. Now, I work for a performance and racing company. This... Bronco does not get my dick hard. It just doesn't. And then they actually announced the engines that are going to be available right up front because why make a V8 available? That's just stupid. Why would you want a Coyote V8 in a pretty capable, halfway decent looking truck? That's just stupid. We're going to give you the 2.7 V6 and the legendary the most known motor of all time, 2.3 EcoBoost. The 2.3 Mustang looks like it's going to be similar to a Mustang. I mean, what other 2.3 is out there? And that's the only one that you're going to get available with a manual transmission. The EcoBoost. You know, when you turn it on, you go to your driveway and you look at your $60,000 Bronco and you're like, actually, I got to do a cold start. It, okay, a cold start, and then it comes off a cold start, then it goes into a cam lope. This is what your Bronco is going to sound like after you put an exhaust on it. <clears throat> Honey, what's that? It's my $60,000 Bronco. It sounds like shit. <laughs> well, it's got an EcoBoost, so. So that's the most disappointing. Like, I thought being underwhelmed to death about the Mach 1 was a thing. But now I'm under... Now everyone's out there, oh, it looks great. Okay, you guys that like four-wheel drives, I don't know what the fuck's your problem. I'm into racing. I'm into going fast. There's nothing to me, to me, Alejandro Flores. There's nothing sexy about a four wheel drive. There's nothing sexy about a Jeep. There's nothing sexy about anything that looks like it can't run a fucking number. And you guys are going to really go trail riding on a $60,000 piece of junk ass. I mean, it's pretty. It's got nice paint and you're going to rock. No, that's going to be the most pavement princessy piece of junk on the planet everyone on the planet is gonna buy that thing and pound the pavement wall you know park at walmart taking up two parking spots because you know you don't want anyone to park next to you so you take up two parking spots bro dozers i mean guys that thing probably is capable but people like me don't give a shit and the best thing that happened the other day was jeep was like oh shit no v8 option so they teased 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 a 392v8 in a jeep i don't care that they tease it unless it's out and about but knowing dodge and chrysler and all those guys those people put hellcat motors and big v8s in everything like i said last week and that's why in my opinion they're winning okay they're winning with people like me the guys that want to mall crawl the guys that want to go trail riding the guys that want to go camping who the fuck wants to go camping fuck's wrong it's 2020 it's 20 fucking 20. We, we, we fuck camping. Fuck me camp. What's wrong with you people camping? Anyway, back on topic. So I'm not turned on. So if it had something like a, at least a Coyote V8 and you don't think someone would buy for $80,000 or $85,000 if it had a Predator motor in it, like legitimate Predator motor. And one of the guys was like, oh, well, Ford's not going to show their hand right away. Why the fuck not? 
so they make you buy it twice? Imagine you're that sucker ass hoe that goes to the dealership, stunts, drops, you know, 20 stacks. Stack? A stack? A rack is 10 stacks. So you drop two racks, I think. <laughs> I'm not up on my trap terminology. I'm a little rusty. Do you know what I am saying? You drop two racks on a down payment. And you got a $40,000 bill. And then two years later, guess what comes out? A coyote or a predator in a Bronco. I would look at Ford and go, fuck you, Ford. You're making me, you're, you're making me buy it twice instead of just giving me all the shit up front that is going to be available in the future, except it might have a, an upgrade. No, they're going to give you the 2.3, the legendary EcoBoost 2.3 that blows up idling. It chucks a rod idling have you heard an ecoboost motor at full song with an open exhaust have you heard an ecoboost 2.7 f-150 truck with an exhaust it sounds like shit it sounds like absolute shit and you guys are looking at the paint you're looking at the interior you're looking at the nav screen and then when you get in it chicka 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 Oh, oh yeah! It's uh, you're gonna control. You're gonna do some mental gymnastics to convince yourself that this thing is worth a fuck. And it really, really, in my opinion, they missed the mark. They missed a good opportunity to at least stuff a V8 in it. Please, why didn't you stuff a V8 in it? Well, at least so people like me could shut the fuck up. Now, then came the ball washers, the absolute ball washers that want to get some weird press access to Ford, and are given this thing. Pie praise. It's the best thing since what? It's the best. Oh, it's so awesome. And I'm like, do you get paid by Ford? Because if you get paid by Ford and you don't disclose that you get paid by Ford and you have a positive opinion, when was the last time a writer gave you a negative opinion about anything? Out of all the ball washers out there, which ball washer gave you a negative opinion about any Ford product that has come out in the last five years. I'll wait. I'll wait. Nobody. Nobody. So unless you disclose, hey, by the way, I get paid by Ford and I think this truck is pretty badass, then the picture is clear. But if you don't make it known that you're paid by Ford, I like, like it's sponsored. Spay, hey guys, I, I got, I got picked up by Ford and I wrote up an art. No, if you're like, I think this thing is amazing and you're getting paid on the backside by Ford or you're trying to gain favor, trying to gain access, trying to gain shit to their track events and all this bullshit. That's some bull ball washing shit that you're doing and it's disingenuous and people that actually believe you and then get in it and it sounds like a can of dog shit going down the road, but it looks cool, are going to go, why the fuck did I buy this thing? Then they're going to be upside down on it. Or that truck will sell well, similar to how the Gen 1 Mustang is selling well all of a sudden. All of a sudden, we've had a resurgence of the Gen 1 Mustang. The Gen 1 Mustang is being tuned left and right by us. And I'm like, what the hell happened? Price. Price came down. They're probably $15,000. And you can get it at some, some affirmed loan at 15 or 27%. You know, and then you can pick it up and have an $800 down payment on a 105,000 mile coyote that you're probably trying to supercharge. And you're like, is it safe to supercharge a 105,000 mile coyote? That sentence literally answers itself. So I'm going to get right to it, to the paid chat and the peasant chat. I'm going to try to get my uh, opening monologue shortened and get back to the guys because I, I've been missing out on a lot of the quote unquote peasant chat and I feel terrible about it. So I'm going to just get going and get right after it and answer some of your questions. Let's talk about Mach-E. Let's talk about Bronco. Let's talk about ball washers. Let's talk about whatever Epstein, uh, <laughs> all of it, all Wayfair. Oh my God. Everything. <clears throat> Shannon Dugan, first guy on deck. He says, give me five bucks. And he says, first things first, what's up with that giant post with vmp magnuson deal that iconic gt500 posted on facebook so i guess there's some drama going on there that i i can't talk about i know exactly what happened but it's not my fight and is not my position to say anything i'll just say this if there was ever an agreement if there was ever anything that was agreed upon and someone backed out of it that's fucked up but Again, I don't know all the details in terms of the real nitty gritty details. I have only heard from one party. I'd like to hear from both. But if if one thing is taught, if one thing uh, that 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 working in the business has taught me is don't trust anybody. 
MFP came into this with great intent. Oh, we're going to we're going to make good products for the people and they're going to make a little money and life is good. Then they probably hit a couple bumps in the road and then Pro Chargers, you know, he showed Pro Chargers something. Pro Chargers like, oh yeah, that looks great. Never even hit him up about it and made an exact copy of it. And I went, that's the problem nowadays, man. You can't trust anybody. And if I have learned anything in my five or so years being in this industry is don't trust any motherfucker. I trust about four people and I've met hundreds in this industry I trust Jake from Power by the Hour, Frank Perdomo, Lund Racing, which is two or three of them. I trust Matt Coates because he's been super loyal, super great. I trust people like Ultimate Header. I trust people like FIC, UPR. I trust, I trust those guys. They haven't tried to fuck me. Everyone else has. Or piggyback on some dumb shit. It's crazy. But yeah, Shannon Dugan, I wish I had... I mean, I, I have the details. I can't just talk about it because it's, it's not my business. There's some silliness going on and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, one slow R1 says, cop one, Matt 760. <laughs> Why didn't you use the drag tune, bro? Get away from him. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Jams gave me some money. I appreciate that, Mr. Jimmy Jams, for supporting the channel. Jared Bryant says, uh, long tube S197 with long tubes in E85. Got a ported CJ, PMS 410, C56, dry shaft, long tune. Can I hit 10s, estimated horsepower? Yes, you can hit 10s. Um, and you can, you're probably making four with cams. Do you have cams? No, you don't have cams. Uh, 440, 450. You need cams if you want to get into the tent, like, comfortably. Pragmatic Lunatic gave me 10 bucks. Channel supporter. Longtime channel supporter. Bad ass. Holy shit. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my God. Okay. Jesus Christ. What's happening? So, <laughs> um, Pragmatic Lunatic gave me some money. Appreciate that. The Boosted Ranch. So, I was out with a chick the other night, and I was I was driving my Mustang. She asked me if it was a V6. It's a three of out. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. You probably should have said it's a, it's a V6, right? Because to say it's a three valve it, it is like gayer, right? So you should have said, absolutely, it's a V6. <laughs> but it says GT on the side, uh, the boosted ranch. <laughs> well, honey, um, three valves have eight cylinders, and I didn't get it for the speed. I like it for the sound, and I like hearing the phasers fly out of the engine at 80,000 miles. Channel support, bitch. Uh, four valve, slow, Yodi Daniel. Car Wizard said, why the fuck didn't they put the 7.3 in that bitch-ass Bronco? If you're going to put anything in that Bronco, bitch, huh? why not the Torque Monster Godzilla? It's just so stupid. It's just like like the whole thing is just so fucking stupid. They're going to sell. You know why? Because all you guys are fuckboys and want like a Tonka truck in your driveway. All you guys are fuckboys and want a Tonka truck in your driveway. You no know dick having motherfucker. I want 37s in it. <clears throat> channel support bitch i said for slow yodi slow yodi daniel sk performance jeff what's up are you putting another kid on this late channel support brain dead this week don't have any questions or comments <laughs> must be busy that's a good thing brother it's good to be busy okay three valve eric says hey i like the channel support also i also turned 31 a couple of weeks back and my front feet balls have become droopy dog ears found some extra bitch with them out of the way nice you can just tuck them out of the way like look where that bitch was hiding because it was tucked by the front feet balls Arturo Hermosillo, which means he's very attractive. Walbro 450s, return style fuel system. Uh, ID 1050Xs and boost reference regulator, and the car is going lean. Car made 800 wheel. Do you think the tuner mechanical issue? Now, you're telling me how the... Oh, so it's the pumps and a fuel system. I mean, you got the bigger lines. It's boost reference. It's got ID 1050Xs, 800 wheel. You should not be running out of steam at 800. Check if one of the pumps is just lazy. Check if one... What I do is at idle, I turn one pump on, and then switch the other pump on and it's probably dead. Or make sure you take the hat out and make sure the pump isn't pumping inside the tank. It has a cut on the nipple and sloshing back in the tank. I have seen that so many times. It's not even funny. Baja Cajura, who are you? I appreciate you very much. And you gave me $100. He gave me $100 and said Vortec or Pro Charger. Pro Charger is easier to install um, either. Okay, I'm one of those guys, if you're going to put a gun in my head, I'm going to pick anything but Pro Charger. But if you like how the Pro Charger install and they make power, you're fine. If you don't mind, um, you know, potentially having your crank fall right off the car and fly into the river, you're fine with the Pro Charger. Kidding. 
Uh, but in, in terms of if it's easier to install, get the Pro Charger. And they tune fine. And they make power. I'm a Vortec guy, though, when it comes to centrifugals. David Jeffrey says, Orale, vato, apoyo, prestamo. Apoyo, prestamo. I don't even know. He ain't saying shit. Uh, Jeremiah Kemp says that John Lund, have you seen power loss through a stock capback on a Gen 1 car making 850? Wanting to quiet the car down, currently have Magnafil 3 inch street series. Yes, Jeremiah Kemp, we have seen power loss with stock mufflers. <clears throat> Arturo Hermosillo says, thanks, John Lund. I have an 03 Turbo Cobra. I don't think y'all take on it. No, we, we don't fuck with Cobras. <laughs> fuck all that. <laughs> Why are they saying thanks, John Lund? Did he, is he, oh, he, must, he, th he thanked John Lund in the paid chat. That's crazy. David Jeffrey says, coming in before Danny Green drops a deuce twice and pisses on it. Apoyo Totin. David Jeffrey again says, Alex, out here looking like Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias or got jacked and lost his hair. Apoyo Prestamo Totin. <laughs> He's great. And Daniel Green comes in with the biggest balls in a wheelbarrow and he says, here you go, guys. See your 300 and raise you 200, Mr. Lund. Whoa. Ho. And I think he's maxed out, guys. Daniel Green found out in the last couple of weeks that all you can do is give 500 bucks per show, and that's all you can do. You can't give any more. So that's kind of a good thing. Throttle motherfuckers back because it's a little silly. But hey, I'll take your money. Um, Belfers says, opinion on Sunoco 93 gas. We have two Chevrons and zero shells over here. Also, when you're going to stop being a gay with NA drag and start road racing, actually, you got that backwards because if you look at road racers, they're the gay ones. The drag racers are the fat ones. <laughs> the road racing stuff hasn't really tickled my fancy yet. This is why. Nothing beats the shit out of a car more than road racing it. Two, three, four laps around Palm Beach International or, or uh, Sebring or, or any of those places destroys the brakes suspensions the engine it just destroys everything and i thought to myself if i'm gonna road race something i'm gonna road race a piece of junk that handles real good i'm not gonna road race a forty thousand dollar car now I'll, i can do some like small uh parking lot gay events you know cone cone slashing but i haven't gotten to that point yet i'm having too much fun with the fairmont the red car um and then the events here are far and few between not only because of corona but it's not really that prevalent down here. People kind of just drag race or street race down here. So why not? I'm going to stay in my wheelhouse, really. But I'll I'll try it. But I'm not going to go all in on it because one's expensive. Two, it beats the ever living daylights out of your car. And I want to keep that car for, for a while. Power by the Hour says, really looking forward with Lund Racing on the 7.3 Godzilla and the 2.7 EcoBoost engines. We're going to swap them. <laughs> you know he's full of shit. That is Frank Perdomo talking all that shit. Poor boy 313 says, don't let everyone know your business because haters will screw you. Dude, in this industry, you cannot say what you're doing, what you're going to do. And you know how many times, orale, you know how many times somebody come up to me and say, hey, Ale, I got a secret. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. And that motherfucker has already told half of the Mustang community. I'm like, you know what I say now? I go, just don't tell me. Get the fuck out of here. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Because you already told everyone. That screenshot, that, that, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> the word, we, oh my God, I, I, I'm totally blanking. All the shit talking that has been done, you've done it to, you've, you've said it to everyone else. The rumors, yeah, yeah, the rumors, that's the word I was looking for. All the rumors that, that, that you've heard, you've told everyone else, and then you're going to try to tell me like, like, don't tell anybody, Alex. And then I'm like, I'm not going to tell. I'm like the only one that doesn't tell anybody. That's the problem. You know how much shit I got up here? Woohoo. Ruined careers. So I'm, I'm staying quiet because there's no upside for me. Um, Eric Vega says, channel support, bitch. Oh, if I have more Bronco and Jeep memes, be sure to send them to you. Badass. Yeah, I've got nothing but crazy memes and just a bunch of crazy shit. It was very cool. They are cocksucking the Bronco but bash the Mach 1. No. I remember uh, the same ball washers were like, Oh, you know, the Mach 1's the most innovative. I'm like, guys, 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 guys. You'd be more credible if you said, you know, the part it's a part spin car and hopefully it does well and, and, and it's a little expensive. You know, that's what they should have said. It's a little expensive to go on the, um, the whole putting badges on shit and going into the parts bin and all of a sudden... They they're like, oh yeah, this thing's a brand new Mustang. No, it, it's a it's a bullet with a shittier. Yes, I said it, a shittier transmission than the MT82. Bet me on that shit. 
bet me on that shit that that just because it says tremic does not mean it's some kind of bulletproof piece it's just not going to happen matthew goodall 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 says uh peasant channel support bitch up oh my god and 15 things came through at the same time and you're gone so i'm going to try to find you Channel support, bitch, from the young man that left his traction control on at the drag strip and had the nerve to send you a log. Matthew was like, oh, I went to the drag strip, bro, and it keeps nosing over. It's like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, traction control. He goes, no, 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 it's totally off. Send me a log. Oh, I took a log. Uh, right there, you see where your throttle's shut? That's traction control and torque source, too. Oh, yeah, it's traction control. El Coyote says, brand new Bronco's ugly as fuck. That front end is, is what the fuck? Is dog shit or dog? It's just dog. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I'm not a big fan of the Bronco. I was never a fan of the Bronco unless it's the OJ big F-150 looking Bronco. That's the only one I give a shit about. I was like, ah, it's a fucking truck. That's a, you know, it's manly. Now you're going to get into this little Wrangler looking thing and you're going to be like, oh yeah, just totally worth $60,000. Fuck out of here. EG Performance says, do you don't think the 2021 Mach 1 with a 10-speed will be better off than a 10-speed GT? Is the bullet any better? Is the bullet any better with a 10R80 than with an MT, the MT82? It's a bullet. It's a bullet. I haven't seen a bullet run a number that's better than a base GT with 355s and a tune. Sorry. And stock cold air, stock auto body, stock fucking everything. Ask Matt 760. That boy's car rolls the fuck out. He ain't got shit done to it except a tune and a dump cold air intake. That's all he's got. And he'll roll on a fucking Mach 1. I put my money on Matt 760 over any Mach 1 with a 10R80 from the factory. Hell, I'll even limit his fucking, I'll even limit the speed, the rev limiter to whatever the Mach 1 is. And I'll put him head to head and Matt 760's car will gap the ever living daylights out of that Mach 1. I guarantee it. <clears throat> I ordered a Vortec kit with 1050s, injectors, and a BAP and a 3.6 pulley. Do I need oil pump gear? Gonna stay on pump gas for now. I don't think you ever need, need, need oil pump gears. I think that's one of those things that the market has somehow latched onto a lot of the, the people that don't really understand what, why the oil pump gears break. The oil pump gears break because you slam limiters and chain resonance and, or you're yanking on the crank a lot with, you know, a supercharger that yanks on the crank and it stresses because the oil pump gears and the crank sprockets right behind it. And it's kind of going, it's leverage, just going, eh, I'm going to fuck with it. And then if you go, pop, 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 and there go your oil pump gears. Don't hit the rev limiter, and you're okay. Had 115,000 miles on my motor. Never had an issue. Stock oil pump gears. What parts do you recommend to replace for a Gen 2 Coyote so it can handle a 1,000 wheel? Well, it's going to be, you have to stud it, the short block, put a Ford short block in it, put some studs in it, and a lot of boost. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you basically get a forged bottom end. Forge and I would sleeve it because if you're going to shove about 20 PSI in it to make that kind of power, maybe more, I would definitely sleeve the car. I sleeve it, forge uh, rods, pistons, stock crank, and uh, studs and boost, and it should be okay. Hey, BHL, you didn't answer my Sunoco gas question. Belfer, sorry, bro, I got off kilter. Ah, fuck, now I got to go up, and there goes that. Um, there's zero shows over there. Also, when you're gonna be getting in road racing? Oh, see, that's the problem. You got me off. You got me off with the road racing shit. Um, Sunoco's fine. Sunoco's fine. Look, I've seen some marathon gas stations be absolute garbage, and some be at halfway decent. Some people swear by race gas gasoline, and some people hate it. I've had nothing but success at the one here in Lake Park. It's been fine. It's been fine. So it all depends on your location. Now, some will say, well, I drive a truck and I deliver to the same gas stations. It's all the same shit. Then why the hell do they perform differently? Please tell me, truck driver, why they perform differently. Truck driver, I don't know. I just put the holes in the ground and shut the fuck up. Okay, put the holes in the ground and shut the fuck up. Um, but yeah, Sunoco will be fine, dude. Sunoco will Sunoc be fine. Texaco is fine. Chevron's fine. Shell's fine. BP is fine. It's all fine. Grant Mitchell? Grant Mitchell? Where are you, Grant? Fuck. God damn it. Slow ass piece of shit. Grant Mitchell gave me five bucks and didn't say a goddamn thing. Uh, <laughs> Jose, Delgado, Jose Delgado gave me $20. He said, for your next Brazilian wax. <laughs> I like my asshole wax. Uh, uh, actually, you know, my asshole being wax is uh, pretty sick. 
Uh, Kelly, Kelby Youngblood says, want to sell the LU 47s? How can I reach you? If so, they're already spoken for a uh, gentleman from FIC, one of the, uh, employees from FIC, who's a local guy has this 197. I said, brother, they're yours. They've given me a couple sets of injectors. The least I could do is give their employee a set of LU 47s for nothing. JB says, when are you going to have Christian or Frank or PBH on the show again? I can tell you for sure. Christian will never be on the show. Frank of PBH, um, whenever he wants, whenever he wants. Uh, Frank, I think the problem with Frank is this. He represents power by the hour. So I think he wants to definitely <clears throat> make a, keep it, keep it professional. But Frank as Frank Perdomo is fucking hilarious, legit, funny, insightful. Once he goes into robot mode, hello, my name is Frank Perdomo and I am talking uh, by power by the hour coyote. So I'm like, come on, I need you. I need you. Not robot, not robot, the shit we talk, you know the shit we talk, but I understand he has an image to uphold. I don't. I just like, fuck it. This is, this is what it is. So I get it. But if I want to have Frank on the show, it better not be Robo Frank. It'll be, it better be Frank Perdomo. <laughs> He's great when you get him alone and uh, just talking normal shit. <clears throat> About my question from last week regarding Coyote swapping a Ranger. What I meant was I was doing a Coyote Ranger four-wheel drive race truck. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember your, your, your question last week. There was a shitload of questions, so I'm not 100% sure what the deal is with your truck. <laughs> oh, I, maybe I criticize it because I'm like, why would the hell would you want to do that? But if you want to make some Tacuache style Coyote Turbo all-wheel drive Ranger, uh, I still would recommend against, against it because it is hideous. They're ugly. Unless you mean the new Rangers, and I still think they're ugly. Uh, five will Shirley says, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? Big O says, when are you guys going to start online tuning Academy? <laughs> those that can do those that can't teach. You get them on oh, dogs barking like a motherfucker. Listen to that. Get them. Uh, the dude blue must be running the Bronco team over at Ford, as you recall from previous steam stream. He supposedly is more knowledgeable with tunes than me. He's not. He's not. If he says he's more knowledgeable with tuning than me, uh, I mean, I'll fucking challenge him. When it comes to Ford, that's all I know, man. That's all I know. When it comes to Ford, he doesn't even know the theory behind drive by wire, like drive by wire. No idea. No idea. Oh, you effective area. No, 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 none of that shit matters. No, no, you're wrong. Shut up. Finally, a show I can catch live being a truck driver. Back in the Mustang. Is a new tune revision required for cooks, long tube headers, and free flowing exhaust? It depends, the, it depends on the year of the vehicle, okay? A lot of the calibrations, and I'm not just talking about me. I'm saying in general. Um, a lot of the calibrations are pre-configured for exhaust mods, especially 11 to 17. 18 and up is a little more sensitive. Edgar Sancho says, on three fuel system or four innovations level one. Are you fucking insane? Are you fucking insane? Four innovations always. That is Always going to be my first choice. Always. Red Rum says, uh, Red Rum 5 says, Red Rum 5 gave me $5. Doesn't say anything. Badass shit. See? Awesome. He actually wrote that. I love him. Karam Ramo <laughs> says, Hey, Alex, I have a 13, uh, 15, a 13, five liter naturally aspirated with bolt downs and 85 on a stock intake because it seems like it works best for me, especially when I shift at 6,900 RPM. My question is, would, Doing a dumped help with power. I think it helps with weight. If you dump exhaust, it just helps with weight. I mean, you're taking the uh, extensions off, you know, the uh, over the axle pipes, the OTAs, and the um, axle backs, taking them off. That's what, 50 plus pounds off the car. I think it's worth it just in terms of the, the weight savings. Power by the Hour Performance, a.k.a. Uh, Frank Perdomo, says... Hey, Alex, uh, what have you guys found to be the best cam for my 7.3 liter Godzilla, the Ford Racing B or E cam? Just kidding. That is going to be funny when the alphabet cams come out again for that hunk of shit. That, that, uh, oh, you guys are going to swap it. I know it because you guys are knuckle dragging, mouth breathing fucking retards. But, um, you know, you're going to have a car that chops, blah, 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 makes 450 horsepower. So that's about, that's about, 20 shy of a coyote <laughs> it's going to be heavier in the front it's going to be uh oh it's going to be it's going to be it, hood clearance is going to be an issue because the throttle body points way up but it's going to chop and be big and, and it's godzilla and then hey, you want to race sure and it gets donkey gapped by a, a gen 1 coyote f-150 gen 1 coyote 
for the boosted guys in the peasant chat and Alex to answer, what oil and weight are you running? Uh, 750 to 850 rear wheel horsepower. Guys, I run Ford Motorcraft semi-synthetic. I have never been one of these oil guys because I worked in the millwright field and there's oil analysis on bearings. The most, the most consistent running equipment in the, on the planet that depends on, you know, that, you know, you rely on, you rely on your electricity, you rely on your water pressure, you rely on, on your, on everything, the everything on pumps and mechanical rotating equipment. And they run straight 30 non-detergent oil, straight 30 non-detergent oil. It just fucking 3,500 RPMs for 15 years. And there's one guy that does PMs, preventive maintenance, all over the plant. And he, with a little oil, it goes clickety click, clickety click, looks at the oil, looks a little brown, swatch, you know, swishes it over, bam, puts a new shit in it. Straight 30, straight 30 non detergent. And you guys are out there like, what about AMS oil? I did a test and shut the fuck up. Shut up with your overanalyzation of oil. What the fuck is wrong with you? Ford, semi synthetic, and on supercharged vehicles, I run. <gasps> 50 weight. That's right. I run 550 or 1050 because I'm in Florida. It never gets cold. It doesn't have to be fucking fucking super thin. It, it, it gets cold here. It never gets cold here. So I need 1050 or 550. Oh, yeah. Well, that's crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You're right. You're right. You're right. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Go buy $500 oil. Go ahead. Go ahead. You stupid ass motherfucker. <clears throat> <laughs> I get on rants and uh, I'm surprised. Say it with me, Alex. Fix your shit, people. RS3 for me. Dude, fix your shit. I've had so many guys. So I got a guy right now that's idling at 1,000 RPMs for no fucking reason. And he's like, all I did was my headers. And I'm like, okay, something happened there. <laughs> I'll be sorry. I don't know. You fuck something up because I'm not commanding the idle to be at 1,000. So fix your shit. FYS. Uh, boosted guy. Okay. John Lund answered my question. Thanks. So answer my peasant question for someone. Got it. Uh, where's Christian? No idea. Alex, would you go to uh, 20? Uh, so he paid me $2. So I, so I said that, um, Alex, would you go with an 18, 10 R80 or a 13 boss 302? 13 boss 302. I mean, I don't have to finish the question. Would be a daily driver and mods would be free flowing exhaust in the 85 tune boss 302 out of those two boss 302. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's a more rare vehicle. It's a great engine, master race before Predator came out. And um, it's probably going to retain its value better if you want to give a shit about value. Coyote Pat says, I know it's been discussed, but how much horsepower can I reliably make on a stock gen one with 88,000 miles with a blower? 650. My car has been a CJ car for a while and I'm finally wanting to just throw a blower on it. 650. That's a nice number. I'm not saying 651 blows it up. I'm just saying 650 is a nice number. Do you recommend 331s or 355s with boost on a 15 GT? Plan on going centrifugal and want to be around 7 to 800 wheel with a 28 inch tire. Gracias por todo, Eric Vega. Orale. Um, 355 is a nice one. 355. I mean, big boost. I'm saying big 7 800. 7 800 with an MT82. 331s. Grant Mitchell says, hey, Alex, I have a Lund 207 GT500 with a cold air intake. I had to move out of California for military. What are my options for a blower swap for a 600-wheel goal? Dude, a Trinity blower. Just get a Trinity blower. A takeoff from a 1314 GT500, slap it on that sucker, 2.4 pulley, and MU52s, twin boosted pumps if you give a fuck, and, that, and, a, and, a, and a cold air, like a 120 cold air, and that guy will make 620, 650 like that. No problem. CJ twin 65 throttle body. Done, done, easy, cake shit, all day. <clears throat> Coyote Pat says, uh, also, any specific blower do you recommend for a Gen 1? Uh, a lot of people have been telling me to upgrade, but I love my S197. Now, I love S197, especially the 1112. For whatever reason, I like that. It kind of looks older, you know. The 1340 is beautiful, especially ruby red 14s are just tits. But, in my opinion, Gen 1 is where it's at. Um, but, I would do a, a TVS, a Roush, like a Gen 2 Roush, uh, 
I wouldn't do anything like a 2-3 Whipple. 2-3 Whipples are no good. 2-8, two, 2-9 two, Whipples are decent. Really decent, actually. Um, and front feed Whipples are really decent on that vehicle. So, or a centrifugal, a Paxton or a Vortec. But if it's, a, if it's a manual, honestly, I'd stay away from centrifugals for whatever reason. Centrifugals and manuals love to knock in between the shift. Don't ask me why. They just do. So, top mount supercharger like a Whipple. Uh, Vor uh, Whipple front feed 2.9 or a uh, Gen 5. I don't think they, the Gen 5 is too expensive, in my opinion, to put in an old Gen 1 car. Uh, but yeah, look at a Whipple, like a Gen 2 front feed Whipple or a uh, Gen 3 front feed Whipple. Uh, TVS, like a Roush. And if you want a little top end power, centrifugals are where it's at. <clears throat> uh, what's up, Alex? Going to track Sunday. Can I get that 6260 pass with the new slicks? Uh, hopefully, I can get that 6260 pass with the new slicks. Yeah, it's an eighth mile track. Yo, good luck. You can drive it. Uh, we, we took care of your knock sensor, so the car should be making another 50 to 60 wheel horsepower from that day that you want. Showing some channel support, Brandon says. Uh, I've been bored because my run runs great. That's exactly what he said, guys, because my run runs great. Um, first, world problems. I know nothing about nothing to do but drive. Maybe I'll get around to building a Gen 2 one day. Uh, the sentence made no sense, but he paid me $10, so I read it. David Jaffrey says, what are your thoughts on Jay Leno's Predator Swap Bronco? Apoyo culo y totin. <laughs> Support, ass, and pussy. Is that what he said? Apoyo culo y totin. <laughs> He's learning. He, uh, it's very cool. It's a one-off. It's, it's, in my opinion, overkill, obviously, but cool. I don't like Jay Leno as a person, but his car collection is legendary. He seems to know a lot about all different types of vehicles. So his knowledge is insanely vast. And I think the Bronco with a Predator, if you're going to buy a Bronco, is the way to do it. A V8 just axle snapping motherfucker. But no, no, let's let's put the 2.3 and the 2. Let's do the 2.3 on it. Yeah, let's do that. The 2.7 is actually a decent engine. The V6 that comes in F-150s. But the 2 fucking 3 Ford, you should have retired that motor why don't I just bring out the why why don't we just bring out the Mercury Topaz? No, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. Let let's just go full retard. You never go full retard. But let's just go full retard and say, why don't we bring out the four-wheel drive Mercury Topaz? Huh? How about the Mercury Topaz? How about the Grenada? How come how come we don't bring out the Grenada if we're doing throwback bullshit? Grenada. Huh? A Grenada. Let's get that out there. How about a Torino? How about, how about a Torino? A big two-door badass. No, no, no. Bronco with a 2-3. And motherfuckers are going, slurp, slurp, slurp. I love it. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Jeep's going to have a competitor. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Quack, quack, quack. Get the fuck out of here. Um, love the show. Please give me a very enthusiastic flap, clean, crank. Ooh. <sighs> See, I'm getting old for that shit, but he paid, so I'm a monkey, so fuck it. Thanks, bitch. says SK Performance Jeff. Where's the soundboard, jefe? Apoyo prestamo. <laughs> what do I have on the soundboard? Oh, what I thought when I saw the unveiling of the Bronco. Is that what, uh, really? Like, hey guys, this is a new Bronco coming out here, and now we're going to offer, these are your engine choices, 2.3 liter Tico Boost engine. <laughs> a starting price of $60,000. Oh. Exactly. If you guys can remember that, that's from Price is Right because I'm old. Um, <laughs> El Coyote gave me a dollar. Thank you very much. Um, do I have to rebuy a custom tune if I'm adding long tubes on my car to finish my NA build? Do I have to buy a custom tune if I'm adding long tubes on my car to finish my NA build? Uh, I mean, it's a good idea if you have a if you don't have a tune on it, you, you you should have a tune on it. If not, you're stuck at a 6800 RPM limiter. Yeah, I would get a tune and get it looked at at least by a reputable tuner. If you were to adapt any all-wheel drive system to any gen, which would it be? Of course, this is hypothetical. No horse parliament. Apoyo desde el hood de LA. Jose Reyes, where are you at? South Central? Are you uh, are you like a, a Venice Beach guy? Or... <laughs> so any all-wheel drive system. Any vehicle, any gen vehicle, like Mustang, GTR's kind of got it going on, no? Right? I mean, um, at a big horsepower level, it becomes a problem. But um, 650 to 700, it doesn't seem that terrible, right? So the GTR kind of has that shit figured out, I think. Now, when it comes to big horsepower stuff and $25,000 DCTs, ah, shit goes down fast. Um, 
I would do the GTR stuff. The GTR stuff seems legit. I don't know enough about Subaru stuff. I don't know enough about Audi stuff. I don't know enough about Porsche stuff. Actually, my bad, Porsche shit. Porsche shit I'd, I'd, I'd incorporate into a DCT that, you know, because the, 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 the for whatever reason, the GTR, it doesn't look like it gets out of the hole as fast as a, like a Porsche, I don't know what they're called, the 911, one of the ones that run like 1060 stock. It's like a GT3 or something like that. Oh, Sebas Ad asked if he has to rebuy a custom tune. No, 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 no. If you're already tuned by us and it's a Gen 1, you should be okay. <clears throat> so Jose Rueb Relas, hopefully that, I think the Porsche one is pretty badass. The DCT and you can just two-step it and launch it. It, it just looks fucking cool. <clears throat> Five Will Shirley says, any particular reason... As to on my tune for a firmer shift schedule, the downshift rev matching is disabled. Yes, you wanted dr drag mode. Oh, I, I wanted to shift the hardest ever. Okay, so that means torque reduction is gone. So when you downshift rev match, it's gone. Why? Because torque reduction is gone. Torque reduction is gone. Downshift rev matching is gone because torque reduction is gone. Uh, five oh Shirley. Alfredo Diaz says, what's up, Alex? I finally ordered my 12 to 5 to 1 pistons in stage 3 cams. Do you think my boss manifold is worth keeping, porting, or upgrading? Will the 350 manifold be a worthy buy or should I go Cobra Jet? Well, if you're going big boy, it looks like you're going big boy. It's time for Cobra Jet. It's time. You have graduated. It is now time to go Cobra Jet because you're doing big compression, big cams. Looks like you're going all out. So why not go all out with the manifold too? Oh, wait, I need a... Hmm. Oh, yeah. Pussy Pounder says, any input on the UPR street anti-roll bar? Street car, not much track time. I had it in my um, black car, the street. Great. Great street manners. No clunking, no weirdness. Kept the, kept the rear end flat, firm, predictable. Now, turning, it's not the best. Turning, depending on the kind of tires and stiffness of your rear suspension is set up, it'll chatter a little bit. Um, but... I liked it and I didn't, I, I drove it accordingly. Going over speed bumps was slow and I wouldn't, I wasn't road coursing with it on. I liked it, liked it very much. The price, the build quality, it's very good. Pussy pounder. Four valves, slow Yodi Daniel says, hey Alex, just start, uh, just start a coyote swap for my 92 Fox body. I got a Gen 1, an MT82. Good luck fitting the MT82 in that fucking thing. Woo wee, linkage problems. <clears throat> but let's keep talking because you paid. Question, should I go straight boost and save the money or and save money for a supercharger? Yes. If so, what do you recommend and what's your ideal coyote swap? My ideal coyote swap is a Gen 2 built bottom end, Gen 2, uh TVS or like a like a insanely ported Edelbrock or a big dumb whipple in a uh, AC Cobra. AC, you know, Cobra like a factory five Cobra black on black on black like 20 inch wheels that look like stock but like they got a lot of fat rubber on them like again i want to make a thousand wheel and i want to die in that motherfucker i want to die in it i'm going to splat somewhere but uh yeah ac cobra <clears throat> uh factory five or backdraft um it's probably gonna be 120 130 build uh that's like retirement shit that's like you know a 50 super chats <laughs> like 50 50 more episodes <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, that's my ideal one. Um, I would go straight to boost and, uh, I would do a, um, honestly on a Fox body cause they're light. I do a centrifugal, look into a centrifugal for a Fox body and go E85. Don't fuck around with the pump gas game. Don't fuck around with the pump gas game. 10 PSI E85 gen one, uh, and gen one Coy uh, coyote. It's going to be evil. 650 of evil horsepower. Wrangler's getting a V8 manual auto option. Rest in peace. Exactly. Rest in peace. Axles, rest in peace. Uh, transfer case. Rest in peace, everything. This thing, actually, I sound better with this thing off. Better. I can actually hear myself. <sighs> Raw Power Mustang says, hey, Alex, channel support. Thank you very much. Shannon Duga says, hey, stupid. Uh, let me make you a sick, nasty intro. Send me some badass clips. Dude, they're all over. They're all over YouTube. You can download my YouTube videos. If you guys want to make me badass intro about 30 seconds long, 30 or 20 seconds long, badass, you know, clips of me doing stupid shit, but it's got to have a fade in, fade out, and my logo, I will pay you. 
I will pay you. If I choose you, I will pay you. So if you guys have very good video skills, I'm saying very good. Give me graphics. Give me, make me look good. I mean, do something. Uh, I'll pay you. I'll pay you appropriately and well. I'm not just going to be like, oh, here's 20 bucks. No, I'll pay you some badass shit if the end product is nasty and that, that I can use forever without like, you know, perpetually paying you every fucking episode. Fuck all that. Once you give me a file, I give you money. We're done. <laughs> But yeah, Shannon, do it up. Uh, raw power. And don't don't tell me you're going to do it on your fucking phone. If you're going to make a, a video on your phone, dude, don't even don't even bother. Make it on a badass, some badass shit. Like nice, nice stuff. <clears throat> raw power. Mustangs gave me money. He said, uh, channel support. 2115 Will says, what gears do you recommend on a 14 GT with a TR6060 swap? 410s. 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 What do you think about the Gen 5 Whipple 3.0 and the 3.8 for the 5.4 and the 5.8 GT500 with a built engine? Um, the 3.8 with a built engine will do real well. It'll do real well. Now, people are claiming 2,000 horsepower. I will wait until I see a GT500 Trinity motor, blower only, make 2,000 wheel. I would love to see that bullshit. I'm like, okay, you think it can be done? They're saying 2,000 horse. They're just throwing numbers out there like 2,000. And I'm like, 2,000? You know how much... You know how much, po- I mean, we <laughs> we got some good-sized turbos and a badass built engine in both gooses, and they don't make 2,000. But a blower all of a sudden is going to make 2,000? Nah. <clears throat> what do I think about the Gen 5 Whipple 3.0? Um, I mean, it's good. They, they, they The good thing about Whipple is they don't need to... Um... <laughs> uh, did you hear? <laughs> did you hear that Magnuson patented a port? <laughs> I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, how do you patent a port? Oh, I cut it this way. Patented. I'm going to patent the word the. So that anytime anyone says the, I get paid. <clears throat> but Carlos SVT, they're both good blowers. Anything Gen uh, Gen 3 and up, Whipple seems to have had it pretty figured out. Uh, David Jeffers says, your thoughts on Tom Cruise. Apoyo prestamo. Uh, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise uh fuck good actor i don't know i love you you're wasting your money right there brother you're asking me actor quite he's a good actor there he's a good actor he's little he's short and he's into scientology (laughs) that should tell you everything you need to know right there uh alex do you have any experience with tuning motion tuning motion raceworks coyote swap fox body turbo kits look man i don't care if they're alibaba turbo kits i don't care if they're chingaling a ding dong uh turbo kits i do not give two shits who makes the turbo kit? The only thing I give I give a shit about is what's your math housing size? And if I look at the kit and it's going to have back pressure issues, I'm going to say, oh yeah, you're going to have back pressure issues. But in terms of tuning, I need to know injector, how many turbos, how many O2s and O2, O2 location, okay? And um, turbo size and, and your goals. I don't give a fuck about, well, this manufacturer, dude, dude, they all get similar tuning, maybe some cam timing tweaks, uh, math housing is the biggest factor. Where's the math housing? What's the size? Where's the sensor located? What injectors do you have? Nothing. Uh, nothing that makes you go, oh yeah, chingling a ding dong kit. So I use. Uh, shut up. Just they're, 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 they all tune the same. <clears throat> Alex, can I see 470 wheel in 10 seconds on a Gen 2 S550 with ported head, Boss oil pump gears? Oil pump. Whoa. Well, w- without oil pump gears, no. Without old pump gears, no. With old pump gears, yes. Because you know old pump gears are worth power. Fuck me, man. When when I see questions like that, when someone sends in a tune form, hey, what's done to your car? Well, I got uh, Roush axle backs. I don't give a fuck. There's no sensors back there that I need to give a shit about. I got UPR uppers and lowers. The fuck do I need to know about that? I got a Barton shifter. Why do I need to know that? They give you the, most sh- the shit that does not matter. Well, I got old pump gears. Oh, you do? Well, here's 50 degrees of timing. <laughs> Comp cams, PMAS, cold air intake on 93 auto. No, not on 93. Not on 93. Not on 93. Not on 93. You need ethanol or race gas to reach that number on a Gen 2 motor. Fuck with me. Any word on DCT swaps? I love my Stage 3 2020 Roush, but I think the DCT is, is sick and GT500 markup is insane. Also, what the fuck does drag mode 
on Magna Ride cards do? Nothing. It just disables torque reduction. That's all it is. It just shifts really hard all the fucking time and you lose downshift rev matching. It sucks. It's stupid. And you don't gain anything from it. It's just placebo effect for the fucking guys that want to say drag mode. And in their mind, they go drag mode. And it does nothing. You gain nothing. It just goes boom on the shift. And you're like, oh, I'm going faster. You're going the same. You're going the same. It just thumps your asshole and you like it. DCT swaps, no, nothing, nothing on DCT swaps because that means we'd have to tune your car like a GT500, meaning engine harness and TCM. And it's stop it unless you got thirty-five thousand dollars plus Belfers to spend on a DCT swap. Don't even consider a DCT swap if you don't got thirty thousand dollars in the bank, liquid ready to go right now. Swapping a DCT into anything is not going to happen. Love you. Love you. Not happening. Hey, Alex, any truth to X-Pipes causing turbulence? Choking turbos? Oh, ho, 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 ho. the X instead of the H chokes turbos. Turbos don't give a fuck what happens after that unless you're talking back pressure. And back pressure can happen in many different places, right at the manifold, at the turbo, at the downpipe. <laughs> the X-Pipe is far down track. So I doubt that an X-Pipe, let's say you have a four-inch X-Pipe. Where's the restriction there? Oh, well, the X. The X is totally... The X. <laughs> H's flow better than X's. What about an O-pipe? Huh? Ah, I'm going to patent an O-pipe. Turbos, O-pipe, and then dumps. <laughs> so stupid. A whole pipe an H and an O. A whole pipe What is wrong with people? No, Brian Geisler. <laughs> That's your answer. No. <laughs> Before I go on a rant. Crap, Alex, I got a manual Gen 1 and you keep saying no packs and stop messing with plans. Is false knock really that bad? Yeah. I don't know how the centrifugals mount, but when you shift, it goes rip. Knock sensors at five or six. And I've I've tried everything on the planet to, to remedy that. Knock sensors, sensitivity, uh, false knock factor, da 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 Like, dude, run the 85 and I'll shut them off for you. Fuck it. What's the benefit of a CVT lockout? Don't know what that is. Where should I buy a four innovation fuel system? Ultimate header came through with quality. Badass Dave Cawthon. Yes, I talked to James Browning today. They, ah, I don't, should, can I say it? No, I'm not going to say it. They got some news coming up with for uh, for, for you guys, uh, Coyote guys, that uh, they'll be offering a new header pretty soon. I'll let him spill the beans. And if he wants to text me, Jim Browning, Jim Browning, if you want to text me and uh, let the people know what you're working on right now, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, let the news out. Your thoughts, my um, your thoughts, and my, in my opinion, Dodge's ultimate middle finger to the hot route would be dropping a Durango Red Eye or Ram Hellcat SRT 10 style. Exactly, and they're gonna do it because they ain't got nothing else. Lo you know, Dodge's double edged sword. They got the Hellcat, but they don't really have any technology. <laughs> Just a big stupid motor. So they're like, let's put it in everything. Let's put it in the the the, the delivery van. <laughs> so they're just gonna put it in everything, and I love it. And the, you'll look back one of these years and go, damn, 2012 to 2020, 21, 22 was so fucking sick where Dodge was just putting the Hemi, uh, the, the Hellcat motor in everything. By the way, guys, uh, what time is it? 9-13, July 14, 2020. I predict I have a source that tells me that the new Mustang, the new Mustang chassis, the new up-and-coming S650 is going to retain the same chassis as the s550 and the same five liter yep it's a couple tweaks couple noses here and body tweaks and this and bullshit but it's supposedly going to share the same same chassis so don't know if that's a good thing ever elevation dyno numbers are stupid channel support <laughs> no the problem is this blue 99 the correction factor Every guy that's in altitude, every guy that's in altitude, if you guys go to Colorado and get your car dynoed, or if there's a car, you know that it's in Colorado or somewhere fucking high as fuck, New Mexico or some shit. Please, after they tell you the thousand horsepower pump gas number, they need to tell you the correction factor. Oh, thousand horsepower, a oh, 30% correction factor. Oh, so 700? <laughs> <laughs> so 700 horsepower chicken or the egg first two dollars paid two dollars to ask chicken or the egg well 
if you want to get religious, if we are made in the in the image of God, who made him? Why are apartments called apartments when they're together? They should be called togetherments. Uh, do you suggest getting a revision on your tune if you're going to get a free flow and exhaust? It's a good idea to at least have a data log looked at to make sure you didn't bump a sensor or that the car doesn't need fueling tweaks. It's a good idea always to get it checked out. Do you suggest, oh, you said that. Coyote Pat said, save some time today for some more horrible ex-girlfriend stories. Don't waste my money. <laughs> $5. Uh, horrible ex-girlfriend stories. I don't have that many. Why does, everyone, why does everyone on ACMR Facebook page hate you? You've literally done nothing wrong to help the community for the 5 platform specifically because they're all the same guy. The Rovo having, AMR, uh, um, what's the stupid light? Ro uh, Raxium headlight having, uh, Jai talking, Marico motherfuckers. Um, I'm not aware that they hate me and I don't care. I mean, I, I left that group a long time ago because it, it became... It the, the the guy running the group was just you know had the handout and I'm like you know I, I just didn't want to be a part of that community it was just fuck boy central so if they hate me they don't tell me nobody tells me nobody ever tells me to my face anything they they're like oh we love you then they leave what a fucking asshole and I'm like oh okay cool every dude, all the guy every guy's like that. Uh, but I'm not aware of anyone hating me, Hurricane Logan. They just probably go, he's an asshole. He's not, he's not the dude in blue. The dude in blue really knows shit. I'm like, oh, okay, got, got it, got it. I, I'm slowly phasing out of Facebook because I want all of my content here. And I'm going to tell you why. I want to get paid for it. I want to get paid for it. I'm done trying to give, not that I know everything, but I have a unique perspective and I have a lot of access. A lot of people like people, uh, they get mad that I come up like, who told you about mock? Who told you about hybrid shit before it even started to become a thing? Who told you about electric shit before it started to become a thing? Who told you about the predator stuff? I got decent sources in decent places because they want an outlet, right? And I'm one of those few reliable guys that will not give up my sources. So I started going, wait a minute, why am I gonna get? Why am I gonna give this up for free on Facebook? Or I could just get paid for the shit I know. So that's why I do this. Yeah, what do you mean? And the other thing is this. They're probably going, well, fuck that guy. He's, he talks shit about people like me. You know, all the bag, the bagged homos that just, you know, aesthetics. I don't give a shit about aesthetics. My cars are ugly. They all, they're all decently quick, but they're ugly primarily. So that group is all about wheels, lights, and then this tuner versus that tuner. We don't play that game. We don't play that game. <clears throat> J Mad J Junior Mad Torque says 07 GT. Uh, keep having a PO61B 07 on an 07. I got a PO61B, which is like a torque calculation code. Um, it's not a hard code. I looked it up and it says internal performance error in the engine torque monitoring system. Can't figure out what the issue is since it only comes here and there. Any ideas? Well, usually that happens when there's a big variable in your fueling on your cold air. I have seen, especially in 2018 and up Mustangs, when you get a PO61B. It usually happens with a certain cold air manufacturer. That's right, because of the awesome inconsistency that they have. Um, one tune could be spot on. The other tune could be 15 to 20% off on the same part number. That's why certain tuners recommend certain cold air intakes, because the last thing we want to do is fudge bad manufacturing, because we get left holding the bag. What does that mean? Guy puts a car together, or a manufacturer makes a part and puts it out in the wild. And then, oh, they don't know how to tune it? It's not that. It's that your part varies 20% in housing size. Why the hell would I recommend that part to anybody? I would do a disservice to you if I knew the part was subpar and I still recommended it to you guys. Imagine me saying, yeah, buy this intake and me knowing that it's shit. The people that recommend shit to you are selling you shit. The people that are recommending this Bronco, the people that are recommending anything have money to be made. Some guy goes, I can't believe you're making fun of this Bronco from a guy that makes his living tuning. I tune fast cars and fast trucks. I don't tune rock crawling. St what? Alex, uh, I was in the dunes. <laughs> I was in the dunes. I jumped my 2.7. I jumped it and the rods flew out the crack. Can, can you hit my, can you make my limiter? Can you make my limiter go 
So when I'm rock climbing, it's like instead of a soft limiter, it goes boom, boom, boom. I want to go. Hey, Alex, can you make my ghost cam on my 2.3 EcoBoost chop a little harder? The guys can't hear me in the uh, trails. And when I'm in my crawl gear, it bucks like this on the cam tune in the crawl gear. Can you make the cam tune less aggressive in the crawl gear? I don't want to do anything like that. Unfortunately, we're going to have to buy one. Tune it in the event that some psychopath actually orders a tune. That's just how it is. <clears throat> Can't wait to see all the Broncos. Broncos. Oh, that's good, Garrett Smith. The Bronco. Hey, what you got? I got a Bronco. What are they? No chemical. No chemical. No chemical. <laughs> well, recommend what gears you recommend for a daily 18 10 or 80 a roll race most of the time 55s are good 355s are nice but any ideas james J, junior mad torque on that it's probably going to be your cold air data is probably off a little bit so have your tune and look at the data what's up with vmp's exposure on facebook i have no understanding of it except they love china apparently hurricane logan again not my fight but i had to answer your question because i had to Say your question because you paid, but I do not have a dog in that fight. Let the cards fall where they may, and when everything becomes public and verifiable, I'll speak on it. As of now, speculating on it when there could be legal shit happening, I I'd rather not. You guys make fun of China. You know half of this shit is made in China, right? You motherfuckers with iPhones talk shit on China, and you have an iPhone. Come on, man. Leave it to be in says channel support. Benny Blanco from the Bronx says hi. Hey, maybe you don't remember me. Maybe I don't remember the last time I blew my nose either. <laughs> when I get texted in the middle of a show. Um, but Hurricane Logan, yeah, I'm not, not sure. Um, leave it to Beaner already said that. Anthony Gordon gave me 10 bucks. I appreciate you giving me 10 bucks and not saying a goddamn thing. My favorite type of question. Omar Medina says, How much horsepower did you did your gen one make and what was the best quarter mile? N.A. Alex, uh, 1150, uh, made 430, no, sorry, 420, and made 1150, it went 1150 N.A., and then it made 720, and it went 10-1 at 140 at Mod Nats before the rear end blew up. Five will surely says, I don't hate you, and gave me two bucks. I appreciate that. Don't know where that came from. Chris Richardson says, about to install a full UPR suspension. Is there any kind of grease that I need to be using for the poly bushings? If you want to know anything about, uh, bah, you know, don't they just use some kind of like nothing petroleum based, <laughs> you know, like just like just some like lithium, not lithium. I don't know. Just just some assembly lube or something. Don't th just spit on it, man. Just pfft. You know, it's a, it's not that big of a deal, but there is some grease you can put. They have grease fitting, so actual conventional grease, like from a grease gun, is probably your best bet. I'm not exactly, I'm not going to tell you exactly the uh, the brand, but just regular general grease. You can just get from a tub and go just a little bit as long as it's, but if it's petroleum based, I don't think it'll mess with poly. I think it messes with other things like, um, uh, what's the other one? Um. Uh, Ethylene propylene, which obviously nothing is made out of ethylene propylene. That's an old O-ring thing on seals back in the day. Uh, Chris Richardson, so just regular grease. How's that? Mike A says, 17 GT, 2.3 Roush, 15 lower, 69, getting set up. Dual fan, triple pass heat, uh, installed. Roll race for cash coming up. Here we go with these fucking guys and roll race for cash. Oh, my God. Roll race for cash. Do you know how many times we see in the ticket system, oh, I got a race coming up and... um. I really got to make it. I'm like, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm not going to, oh, you got a race? Let me just stop all these orders and fuck with your NA car. Uh, anyway, so you got a race coming up. You got a money race because that's cool. Uh, will I heat soak in 60 degree weather? Been good at 750 with no noticeable heat soak. No, <laughs> heat soak. If you make five back-to-back -back passes, oh yeah, it'll heat soak. How much power do you think I can make with a Vortec 3.6 pulley, 1050s BAP and long tube with a free flow and exhaust on pump gas? 700 because that's what I made. Frank S550 says PMS120, 79 pulley, BAP, and Lund E85 tune, good for 8, 700. Got a Roush 2.3 and the manual T56 soon because I like to party. Best daily ever. Yeah, it'll be close. On E85, uh, on a return soft fuel system, by the way. You're not going to be doing it on a BAP. Fuck all that shit. No, you can't. Okay, Frank S550, no E85 tuning on any boosted car unless it has a return soft fuel system. I repeat, no E85 tuning is available for any boosted car 
unless it has a return style fuel system, or if it's a 1314 GT500 or a Predator GT500. Those are the only two that we say, yep, BAP and the injectors. I'm sorry, and GT350s. <laughs> GT350s come with dual pumps. GT500s come with dual pumps. So just a BAP upgrade and you're good. But return soft fuel system on everything else. Uh, Robert Figueroa says, you missed, you missed my paid question on 908. Instead of asking the question again, he wants me to scroll up to 908, which is the beginning of the show, and find his paid question. Dude, it will fuck everything up if I try to scroll up. Trust me. Cancel culture, cancel, cancel culture. Yeah, that cancel culture some dumb shit. If you ever did anything wrong, Robert Downey Jr. played a man playing blackface in Tropic Thunder and they want to cancel him. Are you fucking stupid? It's the best fucking movie ever made. Suck my balls. <laughs> Suck my balls. S-U-C-M-U-B-A-L-L-S. Says channel support. Puto. All right, peasant chat time. Uh, peasant chat. Finally, peasant chat. Let me just stretch out. <sighs> Big Pop, Bit Papa says, can you tune my new Bronco front differential for rock crawling 373s and put 355 in the rear? I want to make it buck like a Bronco. Did you see the commercial, how stupid it is? When you have a wild horse, you just let it free. And his fucking Bronco fucking runs out, takes off, he's running. Then the fucking Bronco, the, the, the EcoBoost Bronco is like at 5,800 RPM trying to keep up with his 20 mile an hour horse. Uh, rung out rods are flying out of it introducing the void bronco mm. <laughs> like wow i got douche chills you ever get chills for the wrong reason because something's so douchey you're like oh, oh that commercial was fucking douchey good job <clears throat> Lucky Luciano says, is it worth trading a Gen 2 Coyote 6 already for twin turbo built three valve? <laughs> uh, no. No. Uh, Hurricane Logan said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> George Resendez gave me $33.33 and, and didn't say a damn thing. My favorite type of question. Love you very much. He wants to trade a Gen 2 Coyote 6R80 for a 3 valve morning. Pushing 750. I have a friend who wants to do a trade. No. 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 Every, coyote, every fucking 3 valve I've seen flings a phaser or does some dumb shit. Like dumb shit breaks on it. 6R80 Gen 2 Coyote is like probably top dog. It's probably like one of the best platforms to start building something. And he wants to go backwards and have phaser issues. You want to have uh, oh, phaser issues. Uh, how about e-quizzer issues on the two? <laughs> oh, is the e-quizzer match? Hey, does the e-quizzer match on the three valve? Because that's why it's not cranking properly. The e-quizzers doesn't match. Oh, my God. Fuck all that. No, thank you. Joey Lago says, Lago is lake, by the way, in Spanish. Got an E85 tune from you a year ago. For me, not alone racing, me. I went into my private stash and I was like, yo, here's a tune, bro. Because I developed it. <laughs> uh, 10 R80 all stock besides cap back and exhaust. Recently, my STFT are on negative nine while cruising and at what? Tested the E85. Where can I start looking for issues? Thanks. Um, did you... <laughs> All stock besides cap back, negative nine. It's probably just, um, did you test the E85 properly? And it's trimming out 10%. What's LTFT? STFT could be negative nine, but if LTFT is 105, then you have a 4% fueling correction and the car is fine. So I need a little more info, Joey Lake. The psychotic one says, I've watched your video on harmonics and oil pump gears. When I do need oil pump gears on a 15, when do I need oil pump gears on a 15 GT? I don't ever bang the limiter. It's only needed to run a centrifugal supercharger. Is it only needed to run a centrifugal? Usually when people do cams or do anything, oh, let's do oil pump gears. Is it necessary? No. Why do I, why do I say that? Does Roush? To this day, does Roush put oil pump gears in a supercharged car? No. I think it's, 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 it's insurance. Do you need a condom? Do you need a condom? No. <laughs> Is it a good idea to have a condom so you don't have a baby? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you need oil pump gears? No. Is it a good idea to have oil pump gears? So she yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah. Have you heard of the road heaves? <laughs> road heavers? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, fuck. Have you heard of the Road Heaver fuel system? Look, man, that shit is figured out. That shit is figured out. Four innovations, four innovations, four innovations. Bye. See ya. Bye. Anything else, anything else from four innovations is budget, budget, budget. It is just made to fit a certain budget. Why would I want to skip on the most important thing that goes into a car, the fuel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fuck this. I want to I wanna make sure my fuel system um, is less than adequate and budget. That is the most important part. Let me just go ahead and skimp on the most important aspect of an engine, supplying fuel. Yes, that's where I want to cut corners. Got it. Uh, yeah, let me get that fuel system and the VMSs. And can I get a couple of six slits? Because you're at fucking, uh, you know, um, family dollar. Can I get some VMSs, some snow caps? Because I'm going to the movies. Some caramellos, uh, VMS wheels again from fronts, uh, and that and that fuel system. Come on, man. Don't skimp on the most important aspect of shit. Please, guys, get into the habit of buying quality. Because the problem is the Mustang is going to become the cheap shit car that you can make fast. And that's the problem. And then when you ask $28,000 for that shit-ass fuel system, VMS having, shit-ass old pump gear having, shit-ass podgepodge together boosted car, and you're like, well, that's $28,000. No, it's not. Everything you did was budget. So someone's going to negotiate, I was just about to say a derogatory word, negotiate down and all of a sudden people are giving me a hundred bucks for no reason so I got to get to the chat. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, can you tune my new Bronco Old Town Road Edition? <laughs> Have you heard of the, okay, Road Heavers fuel system? Uh, dude, four innovations. Just please, please, please do yourself a favor. Why should be my next model, my 1810 R80 GT. I already did weight reductions, headers, fuel, free flow and exhaust and seat of cold air intake and an 85 tune from Lund, of course. Uh, weight reduction, headers, free flow and exhaust. If you want to port the intake, you could. Ah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, you already did weight reduction, did free flow and exhaust. You, fuck, you're ready for boost, Onyx. You know, I wouldn't fuck with cams yet. Cams are a couple thousand dollars for install and cams. That's just crazy. Just get boost. Just get boost. Just get boost. Bit Papa says, can you tune my old Bronco? He said that. Hurricane Logan says, Gen 1 car stock. Ordered my lethal H back in April with an engage and a tune. What's the cause for a tune update for a 13-20-18 manifold? 100 dull hairs. But if you are out of your revision window, it will cost you an additional 150. So 150 plus 100 if you're out of your revision window, if you're still in your revision window, 100 bucks. Penis for being that guy and giving you PTSD flashbacks. Exactly, Mikey. Thanks a lot for the 100 bucks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm running out of breath. Press full bolt on on the soundboard. Full bolt on. There you go. I think I got another one. What is it? I got another one and I forgot what. Oh, it's the one where um, it's um, Rambo. Rambo, where Johnny is caught in like, like a hotel and he's stuck and the general comes in and he goes, Johnny, it's over. It's over, Johnny. And, and uh, Sylvester Stallone's like, it's never over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. <laughs> that could be used for so many things. I love it. Making sure I did the right choice and keeping the coyote, laughing my ass off. Yes, keep the coyote. A fucking three valve? Come on, man. I don't care how good it's built. Fuck all that shit. Er Ernie Montalbo says channel support, $2. Thank you very much. Ryan Aylet gave me a hundred smackaroos. He said, Alex, send Brandon an adult. No, no, fuck that. You paid me. Uh, I'll send him money. Uh, it says, Alex, send Brandon an adult dollar for me for helping me get my 1965 coyote swapped tune just like you said in your previous fairmont video false knock made the process longer and more drawn out than what needed to be but brandon was easy going and awesome brandon is one of those guys that'll try to become your friend in the ticket system he's like hello friend how are you how is your wife and family how's everything i have a pig its name is uh ham what the fuck Hamilton. My pig's name is Hamilton. And um, my wife is this. And I have a Jeep. And I'm, I have a plane. I'm like, oh my God, just send the tune. Send the tune. Send the tune. <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> I'm not your friend. Understand? Love you guys. I'm not your friend. I think it was like 1500 bucks. Laughing my ass off. Thanks for the answer, brah. 
dude, four innovation fuel systems are 1500 bucks. Like a level one? <laughs> They're like 1500 bucks. They're fine. Ryan, thank you very much for the money. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll definitely make sure Brandon gets it because, look, it is a process. It's a huge process to try to, based on experience, guys, based on experience, Lund Racing, no one has more experience than Lund Racing, period, when it comes to diagnosing a potential issue. I had a 2018 guy come up to me. He's like, yo, man, this thing stalls at a light. And I'm like, you got a cold air. That's it. Yo, it just stalls. And I'm like, how far are you from your oil change? And he's like, why? I said, we've seen some intake cams fall out of phasing when the oil is on the thinner side, especially in warmer climates. And he's like, son of a bitch. I think you're right. I think I'm due for an oil change. Got an oil change. The stuttering went away. How else would I have known that? I bought a 2018 Mustang. That thing exploded. Then I got a 2019 Mustang and I went through all of the growing pains. So I put the investment down on these cars for that specific moment or moments like that so that I can help the customer. I didn't buy because I needed an 18, 19 Mustang. I could have just bought a Navigator with a trailer and just trailer my race car to the track and been done. But I said, let me learn a little bit about these Gen 3s and see what the deal is. The 10R80, Lund Racing already had a 10R80, but nobody had a manual Gen 3 19 and up with the downshift rev matching. So I said, let me get one. And I was able to help customers. That's part of the investment. And good luck finding that anywhere else. Everyone's like, I don't know, your shit's fucked up. Fuck you, bro. Why don't you just sit back and watch cartoons and send one tune at a time? <laughs> we had a guy get bet the other day about that. Wanting to make 750, 600, 750 or high 700s on pump gas. I'm like, dude, I don't care that your shit's forged. I don't care that you built it. You are literally hurting that motor with pump gas and that kind of power. It's just holding up because it's built, but it'll eventually fail. It's just no different than hitting a, oh, you know, hitting like a, a thin board with a hammer and then a thicker board with a hammer. Eventually, they'll both break. One just takes longer than the other to break. That's the difference between non-built and built. Just because it can do it doesn't mean it should do it. And we're going to err on the side of caution and make sure that we try to have the motor last as long as possible. And if that's not down your fucking wheelhouse go somewhere else that'll throw 50 degrees of timing at it go somewhere else that's your bye bye see ya clams mcgee says sometimes they fart and latex gloves flies out <laughs> okay sick yeah he called me friend a couple of times exactly right hey little friend i'm like i'm not your friend i'm like you are stupid what are you doing moron and they love it i think they love it my customers like are gluttons for punishment. They're like, oh yeah, smack me in my fucking face, pull my hair a little bit and choke me while you bang me from behind. I'm like, yeah, you got it. <clears throat> David Zaremba says, how much slower would you expect your car to be track versus street in a quarter mile? Well, grip, right? So maybe a 10th, maybe a 10th and a half. The draggy is super accurate, guys. We've taken the draggy app to the track and it's been literally within a 10th, if not right on the money. 60 foot, everything. So if you have grip versus the, the street where you don't have grip, yeah, about a tenth or so, depending on power level. You know, if you're like big power, like the Fairmont, it'll probably be a two second difference because the Fairmont will go 11 on the street and then it'll go 8, 860, 870 at the track. Say something positive about the three valve. <clears throat> I like the transmissions. I like the colors. That's about it. Robert Figueroa says, worth going from 355s to 373s in a 19 MT82 car? If you're going to go up a gear, go 410s. With a 19 MT82 car, the gear ratio is similar to a 256, so you're definitely going to gain a bunch more from 410s than uh, 373s, in my opinion. Yeah, the new Mach 1 has a Tremec from the GT350, Tommy, and it sucks. Uh, the new Mach 1 is the biggest disappointment, says Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett! Oh, that's so good! Could you imagine? Could you fucking imagine? Will Smith, the corniest dude on the planet. Oh, man, I was going to save this for my show tomorrow. The corniest dude on the planet. Nice guy. Made great movies. Superstar. Jada Pinkett. Divorce the dude. Divorce the dude. Divor you know what? We're both fucking bazillionaires. I'm just going to go bang this young guy named August. You know, bang his brains out. No. Homeboy was in their place. And uh, supposedly Jada and homegirl, uh, Jada and uh, homegirl, yeah, Will, were sp split up or separated. But, you know, he was trying to, like, make it work, right? And then she was like, oh, I, I had a, what the fuck was the word that she called it? An entanglement. What got tangled up? 
what got tangled up? There's only two things that can get tangled up in that situation. <laughs> oh, an entanglement. No, you banged a 23-year-old, 24-year-old dude. You left them all fucked up till you fixed your shit. And then Will took you back. Woo, woo. Nope. Peace. See ya. Dude, drop drop him so fast. Like, oh, it's over? Like, when my, when my, when my relationship ended, I was out of the house in 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, it's over. Okay. Boop, see ya. <laughs> Bye. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Unreal. So say something positive about three of like the colors. Coyotes again cheap. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Damn, Alex. Um, <clears throat> These new Coyote guys are getting cheap. My fuel system for my turbo truck is like $3,000, Tommy Hathaway says. I wouldn't have cheaped that on my Yodi when I had it. Look, guys, the Coyote guys are becoming so ridiculous that they're going by price as opposed to common sense they're getting the cheap wheels the cheap fuel system the cheap and the cheap everything the cheap everything and i'm like and they're like why doesn't my car run as good as lund racing's blue goose i'm like because everything's top not shit like top tier top not shit you know and if it ain't we'll make it top not shit but people now are like you know what I got a budget, homes, and you know, the Affirm account only uh, gave me $1,500, so I got to figure out if I want to get the cold air and the injectors, or if I'm going <laughs> to, or if I'm going to get the cat back and the VMSs, orale, cuh, no quema, no quema, cuh. Just saying what's up, channel support, 727 Steve D, I hope your back feels better, Steve D got his back blown out. <laughs> He got his back. He hurt his back. I'm not saying he got his back blown out. You know what I'm saying? Um, Gen 1, 2, 3, Roush. Ten fi Gen 1, 2, 3, Roush. Sick. Uh, 1050X, 91, boosting. Would I be okay dropping down from 76 to 75 millimeter? Live in Colorado. Gen 1, 2.3. Jesus, I didn't see the point there. Gen 1 with a 2, 3, Roush and 1050X is 91, boosting. Would I be okay dropping from a 76 or 75 and live in Colorado? Probably, because it's like an 82 in, in normal environments. But if you were ever to take a, a road trip and you end up at sea level with a 75 millimeter, that bitch going to have a bad time. So yeah, I think you'll be okay. What do you think about the Ken Bell on a Gen 2? Why are they not common compared to other brands? That speaks for itself. Think about it. Why does Whipple, VMP, Paxson, and Vortec, and Pro Charger dominate, dominate the blower market? It speaks for itself. I don't care what liquid cooled this and that and what he and fucking uh, Johnny Lightning, uh, da, 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 da. Johnny Lightning, uh, da, 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 da. Johnny. You mean you mean a, a, a forty thousand dollar motor truck that runs on um, ethanol? And uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, stop it, stop it. Uh, thanks for the opinion, bitch. Oh, for Valve Slow Yodi Daniel says, if you could describe the Coyote platform in with. Oh, fuck. What's that say? With or the phrase over the Camaro, what would it be? Thanks, bitch. Oh, it's stupid. Um, thanks for the opinion. If you were to describe the Coyote platform with a phrase over the Camaro, I don't even know what that means, man. I lo I'd love to like answer your question with a phrase. It's better. It's better. I mean, it, everything is better about it. No cams, no cams required. How's that? No cams required. Every single Camaro, LS, anything needs a camshaft, some kind of upgrade with a cam to make any decent power. Any Coyote with E85 and boost has the capability of making big, stupid numbers, especially Gen 2 and up. Gen 2 and up pretty much said 1,000 is attainable with stock cams and boost. Good luck doing that with any LS. Any, I mean, name any LS with stock, meaning unopened, unopened, not stock sealed. I'm saying unopened, meaning they didn't, they didn't open. Let's say you could do a manifold upgrade and boost. Can it make a thousand? Can it, I mean, maybe, but no cams, no head work, no nothing. Just as it came from Chevy, drop it in something, boost E85. Can it make a thousand? No valve, no valve upgrades, no, 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 no spring up, nothing, nothing. Can it make a thousand? Coyotes can. <clears throat> until they blow up. <laughs> Vincent Mastrangelo uh, says, Alex, do you recommend to get a fuel pump for an NA85 Gen 1 car with an 18 Manny? Uh, fuel pump, NA85 Gen 1 car. You need um, injectors and maybe a Detroit 400 pump just, just for headroom. You don't need a Detroit 400 pump, 
but you definitely need injectors to run 85 on a Gen 1. Um, so definitely get injectors. And since the car is pretty much now getting up there in age, they're getting long in the tooth, uh, so to speak, I would definitely look into a pump upgrade for sure. Now it's getting close for time for me to leave. I'm going to leave in about 10 more minutes, about make about an hour and 45 out of it. So I'll probably leave in about 15 minutes. So any questions you want to get in, get them in now um, just so it doesn't go crazy. And I'll go on the peasant chat. <clears throat> King Yodi of S550 says 15 GT here, 110 millimeter cold air intake, full free flow and exhaust, 18 manual, LA 47s. I'm ordering my engage and tune soon, and I'm hoping to get a pump 93 tune and separate dedicated 85 tune. Which should the pump 93 tune be a flex tune? We do not do. Wait a minute. Yes, I would get a flex tune if I were you. Um, because it gives you the adjustability to run 93. Because, guys, the flex tune does it all. You can run 93, 93, and any mix of ethanol or 100%. 85% ethanol. So the flex tune should be your daily driver tune. And then when your flex tune learns 80 something percent ethanol, you could throw the E85 R tune in it and go get gapped by Matt 760 in Mexico. Joe Daniel says you and Chris now falling out. No, it just, uh, I think it's better that way. I think it's better. Let's just say that. Let's just say we're just two different paths. Which car would you choose? Gen 5 Whipple Charge 2020 350 or a 1314 500? Oh, 350 all day. 350 is a way better car. A GT350 is a way better car than a GT500 Trinity version. Way better car. Way, way, way better car. Stops, accelerates, looks, handling, power delivery, <sighs> pussy getting. I mean, it'll get all the puss. The 14 GT500 with cams and chops and it's cool. But compared to the 350, the 350 is top dog. LS is like a woman, needs a fat stick to perform good. <laughs> put that on the soundboard. Bye. That's true. I should put that on the soundboard. Bye. Yeah, the new Mach 1 has a Tremec from the GT350 Tommy. Okay, uh, this is old. This is an old fucking chat. Woof. This thing never updated. How is the Explorer ST performance going? Being the Bronco sucks. Uh, the ST, the ST, Explorer ST is fine. We tuned it. It does well. We have tuning. We, we offered tuning for it. Junior worked on it, and it was actually pretty darn quick. What should <clears throat> what should I be making with these mods? A sea level 210, where I live. Cold air, 85 millimeter throttle body. Want therm no, the thermostat. Wait, wait, wait. The power mod of a thermostat really makes a difference. Basically, what you need to tell me is this. Your cold air and your exhaust and the fuel. So E85, long tube headers, and a cold air. What gen car do you have? I have no idea what generation car you have, Mike. You know, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, I have no idea. David Zaremba says, 18 PP1 Pro Charge, 8 pounds on 91, made 610. MP82, my draggy says, best quarter mile is 13.5. Fuck my life, 0 to 60, like 5, 8 seconds. Yeah, that's the problem with the draggy. It's going to humble you quick. You need grip, you need a badass 60 foot, and you got to hit your shit points. Alex, what's your opinion on the 3.7 guys running M122 blowers? I think that's cool. The, the, the V6 isn't awful. It's gay, but it's not awful. And I think it's better than any 3 valve. So if guys are putting M122 blowers on a V6, making about what, 4, 450, 500? That's pretty cool. Probably cheap too. Flat plane crank GT350 for the win, Vincent Mastrangelo. Buy a slick, take it to the track, and find out David. Very good. David Zaremba says, I will. I just expected it a little better. <laughs> Is it possible for a love GT500 with a, five, with a Gen 5 3 liter Whipple and ARHs to make 750 on 93? Oh. That, that's asking a lot. I, I would want some kind of octane booster. <clears throat> Can it? Yes. Turn off the knock sensors, shove timing down its throat. Yes. Is it making, is it damaging the car? Yes. Is it better to do with octane booster E85? Yes. Can I run E85 with 1050s and a BAP without return fuel system? Thanks. I would rather get a return style fuel system than an 11 GT500. 13 and 14s are the only ones you can sort of get away with it with a BAP. I will, flat plane crank, S550, Gen 2, sorry, Gen 2, um, so basically E85 cold air in line, 430, 440 tops, is tuning a 14500 along with getting a full exhaust and intake a bad idea in terms of reliability, no, no, you, you should be fine, that's not, that's not going to be a problem at all, who do you like or prefer more, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone, <clears throat> shit, Sylvester Stallone has maintained himself a lot better than Arnold, right, like Sylvester looks like his face is about, like you, it looks like a big zit, but he has maintained himself in better shape longer than Arnold Schwarzenegger did. So I would say Sylvester Stallone. Any thoughts on the GT running the best time in the cannonball? Not really my thing, but interesting. Love the channel. No, I really don't care. 
It doesn't matter. I, he could have done it in any car, right? He could have done it in a Mercedes. He could have done it in a, in a Camry. He could have done it in anything. He could have done it in an F-150 truck if he had the bed be converted to one massive gas tank and he didn't have to stop for tank for gas at all. So I, it doesn't matter to me, honestly. But, I mean, it's cool, but it kind of isn't. <laughs> Here come the Benjis, someone says. <clears throat> Trade TVS Cam 12 GT500 for a C6ZR1. Kind of want one. App absolutely you are silly if you think a zr1 isn't probably the best stick car ever to be made i'm saying better than viper i'm saying it is so legit the c6 zr1 and it will be worth money further down the road it will always be worth good money the c 6 ZR1, in my opinion, is right there with Gen 5 uh, Viper as being king daddy of stick shift cars. Absolutely. What should a Gen 1 car on 85 with an 18 Manny and PMS called their intake no cats make wheel wise? 430, 430 or so. For maybe 440 if it's real happy, sure. <clears throat> okay, uh, Sylvester Stallone's daughter, though. Is she hot? Let me check. <laughs> I got time. Chat slowed down. People seem to be checking out. So let's look up Sylvester Stallone's daughter. Daughters. Daughters. Whoa. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pig, right? Fuck it. Images. Scarlett Stallone. Ooh, get out of here. Oh, those genetics, though. Jesus, Sylvester. He's pumping out them good stuff. That good, good. God. Damn. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Must be proud. <laughs> Why do you hate two valves so much? I don't hate them. They're just irrelevant nowadays. They're irrelevant. Um, sure, you can build them to go fast. Sure, you can throw some forge internals in them and boost and run a, a comparable number. I don't care. A lot of you guys are poor. Hell, you guys are buying fuel systems at places I can barely even pronounce. And you are cheap. So if you're going to take that cheap shit, you know, approach, um, two valves is even worse. Like the, 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 imagine that cheap shit approach on two valves. That's like a tremendous piece of shit. Any thoughts on the rental Mustang? I already said that. What should a gentleman car already said that Sergio, have you ever heard of John Simpson? He currently tunes the fastest naturally aspirated C6 in Texas. If not just Corvettes in general. No, I have not. Um, Get out of here. Answer my questions next time. You don't say 5 -0. Okay, get out of here. I answer my questions next time. Where are you? I'm here now. See? Bitch, huh? Um, David Martin says, C6ZR1 does not have those 7-liter problems. Misfit GT500 thinks, I was thinking of going with a Paxson, but I don't... Okay, he's talking to someone else. Slicks on a daily or Nittle G2. Any other suggestions? Yeah, ET Street SS. ET Street SS. <clears throat> yes, sir. Someone said, uh, how's the reliability on the 350s? Testro won the stock and they feel sluggish down low. They are sluggish down low. They don't do shit until 5,000 RPMs. I see multiple videos on them having issues in, or your opinion. Thanks. Enjoy your show. There have been some, some issues. I would avoid the 16, 17, 18 and try. I mean, sometimes that's the only ones that you can afford and find. And I would stick towards the newer stuff. Um, it's tough to find a one at a bargain. That's not fucked by its mom. So, I would definitely look into a newer one and, and make sure that you're the only one that's given some of the bitch up because I guarantee it, it's had three Whipples, five turbo kits, three nitrous kits, and then it got traded in. Especially if you find it at a dealership where you're like, wow, is the 350 here? Let me look at it. It's fucked. Trust me, it's fucked. I have a Gen 2 Neon, Hemi, Catted Hell needs to, like, whatever. YouTube Corrupt and Free Speech says they should watch your video on why being cheap with Coyote Parts is counterproductive. Such a great video. Dude, I I, got, I think I've answered every question must YouTube guy, uh, Mustang guys ever ask. And I get it. They don't want to go and do the searching. If you just have a long time to do a bunch of nothing, sit on my channel and just let the videos autoplay. You're going to learn something. You, oh, I forgot about that. Or, oh my God, that question or this and that. I've answered questions on injectors. I've answered questions on why being cheap sucks. I've answered questions on how to deal with tuners, how to deal with tuning, superchargers, pros and cons of this fuel, that fuel, that, oh my God, you name it. But for whatever reason, I still get the, do you think this fuel system is good? You know, something that you made up on your own. 
Do you think the red car will hook with a big dirty stall and 373 gear? If it doesn't, I'm going to throw a 315 on it. Right now it's got a 305 tire. So if it doesn't do that, I want to do it on the street. That to me is cool. I'll fucking put down some, some pimp juice if I have to to make that sucker hook. But um, I'll put a 315 tire if I have to to make it hook with a trans brake and a big converter. That's the goal to run mid to low 11s with a converter um, on the street and then take it to the track and see what it does with good weather. Get Avalar says Gen 1 with a Paxton 1050X and a VMP BAP and stop he stock headers. Will I have issues with my cats melting? Potentially, yeah. Let's just be honest. The moment you add boost to stock factory catalytic converters that were not designed for stupid heat and insane airflow and a bunch of bullshit going through it, you run the risk of melting it. Even the stock GT500, the 2020 GT500 was smelling like catalytic converter all over the place. Ford knew eh, this thing's not, this thing's going to have cats, but I hope the guys get smart and take the cats off of it as soon as possible because you'll melt that shit. Guarantee it. The Bronco chassis is perfect. The Coyote would, would have been nice. Okay, cool. Do you think Ford would pull the 5.0 in another car or similar to how Dodge did with the Hellcat? <sighs> Maybe the Bronco will get it. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping the Bronco will get it, but it's fucked up if they offer you the 2.7, the 2.3, and then two years later, fuck you in the ass and offer the 5 liter, making rendering those useless. That would be fucked up if you bought one, and then two years later, you got to spend another 60 to get one. It's fucked up. Is this fuel system good? Something you made up. <clears throat> no, seriously. Uh, they, they literally go, is this fuel system good? And I'm like, Look, you can't talk negatively about something because, you know, you implicate other people that catch shrapnel. But honestly, there's only one that I recommend, and it is for innovations, period. Uh, okay, Team Beefcake has great selection and really good people. They do. Your vids are so educational. I'll go back and watch them often. Bitch out, David Williams says. Hey, Alex, what do you think about the horsepower limits on a Gen 3 Coyote with a Vortec V3 JT on a 3.6 pulley? Uh, MS109, Sunoco 2.6 GT, race gas, no ethanol with long tubes and free-flowing exhaust. Well, you can make probably, probably, probably 800. You know, close to 800. It's race gas. Uh, three six pulley and 21 to 22 degrees. That bitch will make all the jam. Hey oh, I crank out. I crank one out while your videos play. It's called Solo with Yolo. I'm pretty hot. I am pretty hot. My smile. Look, I'm not the best looking guy on the planet, but look at this smile. It's pretty fucking badass. Thanks, my dad, for for that smile. <clears throat> I don't understand why not the 3.5 EcoBoost in the Bronco. Me neither. A 5.0 Explorer would be awesome. Exactly. Zero chance the Bronco will get the Coyote. Ford is all on the Eco Turd bandwagon. Yeah, I get it. Why not do a 3.5 hybrid? Hmm? Imagine the torque that you'll need in the mountains or fucking rock crawling or whatever, camping like a fucking douchebag uh, that you, you know, you can use with a hybrid and a battery. Whoop, get out of that bitch. 800 foot pounds. Nope. Fuck all that. Uh, David Zaramba says, thanks, Alex. You're literally telling me how to build my car once every week. Good to know. Uh, Eco Poop, someone says, David Martin. Um, Misfit, GT500, Laughs, Savage Productions, talking to someone else. Did you see the Jay Leno Bronco? Yes, I already uh, talked about it before. It's pretty cool. Predator uh, Bronco. Come on, focus. Where are you? There you go. Ford needs to get you approval for the new models. <laughs> Ford does not want anything to do with me, honestly, because they... It doesn't make sense. It's smart for them not to want someone that potentially has a negative opinion on something on your shit. It's just, it's really smart not to involve me in that stuff because I'm going to say, that sucks. I'm going to say no to probably half the shit they say because I'm coming from the performance aspect. Now, if they're like, hey man, we got this hybrid badass shit, 300 mile range, goes 11.2 in the quarter mile, it weighs, you know, 3,000 pounds. It's a badass little ride. That, okay. Okay. Now, we were talking, someone was talking about towing. Like, who the hell would tow with a Bronco? Well, somebody would tow with a Bronco. And then they were talking about towing capacity with a Bronco. I'm like, really? That short wheelbase truck, you'd want to tow something sizable with it? Ugh. That was actually pretty funny. Uh, approved by Alex. Ford needs to stamp this one on new models. Now nah, they won't care. No one cares about my opinion. Come on. When it comes to the big manufacturers, they care more about what Ken Block says or uh, the other drifter dude. They don't, they don't give a shit about me. I'm, I'm nobody. Alex, take the hat off. Brett Burke, <laughs> you're weird. Look at this smile. Sorry, too busy managing this hard on. Exactly. Or needs to sponsor Alex, all bullshit aside. Will never happen. I bet that Ford will never reach out and say, yeah, oh, we'd like to bring you on as a consultant or give you stuff. I'm like, no. Because there, I, I almost had Roush there. Um, this guy who um, used to work at Roush, um, forget his name 
it sucks that I forget his name. He's, he's, he's friends with me on Instagram. He got me in the door, young guy, super kind of like progressive and kind of with it. And he understood that social media had power and he ended up going, um, becoming some kind of pot salesman, <laughs> making way more money. <laughs> he went from Roush to like CBD, uh, extraction machines. I'm like smart the guys probably raking in the dough. Good for him. Gen 1 Paxton, I already got that. <clears throat> they didn't put in a, a V8 in it for emissions. Really? So so how are Mustangs passing emission? How are Mustangs passing emissions testing? Oh, hey, Broncos calls into a different category. No, it doesn't. Can you please wrap it up? I'm trying to show my boyfriend a movie. Okay, Chrissy, I'm going to get out of here. Is the movie your hand on his cock? Huh? Anyway, let's get out of here, guys. Thanks for everyone that joined in today. Um, the peasant chat was pretty lit, lit later on. And thank you for everyone that you know, contributed, especially Daniel Green dropping another hundo. Um, who's the other guy right here? The other hundred dollar. I'm going to mention their names again. Mike A gave a hundred bucks earlier and Ryan A-I-L-L-E-T. Whatever the fuck. Sounds French. <laughs> but I want to thank everyone that, that uh, contributed. The regular fans, Jeremiah Cam, Steve D. Um, what the fuck's that guy's name? David Jeffrey. Uh, all those guys that come in here and are here every Tuesday. Thanks for making the show, you know, a regular thing. I appreciate making it part of your lives. Again, I'll be upgrading the red car as we go along. We're going to get a converter. We're going to get weight reduction next. Get that sucker into the 11s the way it sits. So weight reduction is the next video that's going to drop on the red Mustang. The Fairmont is out and about. It's out there doing damage. I'm going to get it on the dyno this week. It is ready. It is running. It is rocking and rolling. It is evil. It does not hook anywhere. I do 100 rolls and it blazes tire now with the ported blower. So I hope to get you guys video um, probably later in the week. And yes, for those of you that are fans of my second channel tomorrow, I will be there tomorrow, 8.15 or so, depending when Frank ends his show at Power by the Hour. When Frank Perdomo ends his show at Power by the Hour, bam! Turn over to that dating channel and we'll talk some shit, uh, especially about Jada and Will. Wow, I'm going to go through that whole video and analyze everything they're saying. And we'll talk about it tomorrow, whether she's some ratchet hoe or she just needed to find herself and she caught herself in then entanglement. That's some bullshit right there. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you later.